Welcome to Flourish in Five. My name is Heather Lawton, and every Friday I share a story, a lesson, or a quick idea with the goal of helping you gain a new perspective. Could you please share this episode and the podcast with your friends? Leave a comment. I would really appreciate it. So as I've mentioned in the past, I don't script these episodes. They are not as planned out as our Tuesday releases are. I just kind of go with what's happening in my life or what I'm feeling I should talk about or something I've experienced that I think might help you. And recently we had our annual BYOP celebration that stands for bring your own pumpkin. My husband, Craig and I have been hosting this event since before we were married. So I think it's been about 25 years now. And the premise is simple. You bring your pumpkin, we eat good food, we carve our pumpkins, and there's a contest. We vote for our favorite pumpkin. It has, of course, evolved over the years, and it has gotten bigger and crazier because that's just how I roll. And we're at the point now where we have about 80 people who attend. We invite over 100. My husband smokes brisket and sometimes pork. We have all of this wonderful food. We get a, a keg of hard cider. It is a really good time. It's a lot of fun. We spend a lot of time, effort, and money on this party. So several years ago, when we were building our new homestead, we were just hemorrhaging money. And if you've ever built a home, I'm sure you have experienced this. There are so many expenses that you just don't account for. So that year, or it might have been the year after, it was around that time, I sent out our annual pumpkin party invitation. I used to send it by mail. I now do it by Facebook event or email invite. And on the invitation at the very bottom, I put a $10 donation would be greatly appreciated. Or I forget how I worded it. A ten, Like it was not required. Like it was just like, hey, if you want to chip in to help for the party, that would be great. And I was doing that because we literally did not have the money. We typically spend over a thousand dollars on this party. It's a really big deal. We love to host it. Of course, it's our decision to host that and spend that money. And we want to be generous and welcoming. And I wanted to have the party and I didn't want us to go without food the rest of the year. So I asked for, okay, I'm being dramatic, but I asked for donations and um, it got back to me that a, a few of my friends were really, really put off by this. Okay. Was it maybe a bit tacky of me to do that? I suppose possibly one could interpret it that way. I, I actually was just looking at it very simply from a mathematical standpoint in order to make this party happen, we could use some help. So a donation is appreciated. I think a handful of people donated money that year, maybe $50. <laughs> so uh, maybe I shouldn't have even mentioned it because it didn't really help anyway. But it got back to me that some people were really put off by this because they have this impression that we are just swimming in a ton of money and that in fact, we have a lot more money than they have. and and I quote, why is Heather trying to monetize her friendships and make money from parties that she throws? And I was hurt by this. Now, this is several years ago. So I had not been doing all the work I had been doing with mindfulness. So I was unaware as to the meaning I was assigning to this, but I, I was hurt and I was sad because that wasn't my intent. I wasn't charging people to be my friend. I wasn't charging people to make money off of my pumpkin party. I simply needed some help. And that was my way of asking for help. And it was misunderstood. It was interpreted in a different way. And when that happened, I thought to myself, I have been on both sides of this issue. I have absolutely been the person who judges someone else thinking, because maybe they have a nice house or a nice car. They must have all of this money. They have all this money. They're rolling in money. They have all the money. I don't have the money. They can do whatever they want. Why aren't they paying for more things? I don't know. Just all of this judgment around it. But when, when the tables were turned and that came back to me, people thinking I have all of this money and why wouldn't I just pay for it? And what was going on with me? I was, I guess my eyes were opened and I thought I am going to be more careful about how I judge others because it's just not fair and you need to stop. 
you can't look at someone's possessions and understand what their bank account looks like. Because obviously we know people who have amazing, big, beautiful homes and fantastic vehicles and vacation houses and boats or whatever, and they're dead broke. Or they might have money, they might not. I know people who don't look like they have any money whatsoever, and they have tons in the bank. We know this logically, but emotionally, we're still passing judgment on people. I think people see that the way the way that we live, and they're still making, in fact, uh, recently, I mean, recent history, a couple of years, uh, a friend of a friend brought another friend over to our property because they were hunting for mushrooms. We have a lot of mushrooms on the property. They were looking for a specific type. Anyway, um, this new person that I met was looking at our home, standing back, looking at the property. And he was like, whoa, what do you do for a living? And I said, I'm a photographer and I teach photographers. And he said, well, I want to be a photographer if, that, if this is what that means. And I said, well, what you're looking at here." is 20 years of good decisions. It is not that we are swimming in all of this money. It's just that we made choices that led us to this point. I think we should just be more aware of the judgments we are making or project, projecting, excuse me, onto other people about how much money they have or they don't have. The whole BYOP thing, okay, <laughs> when that happened, you know, I was asking for a donation it got back to me that people were talking about me. Um, by the way, these people were, are my friends. My friends were talking about me. Instead of coming to me and saying, what's up with the request for donation? I would have said, we're hemorrhaging money. We can't afford to have the party. I need some help. That's what I could have said, but nobody asked me. Instead, they just like kind of chattered behind my back and then it got back to me. Ultimately, I think I had that on the invitation for only two years. I took it off of the invitation because I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed by what people thought my intent was, that I was trying to make money off of our pumpkin carving contest. Like for real, I love the party. I love to have all of our friends and family here. So now I just, ever since then, I save for it. I save for it. So we have the money. We always had the money to do it. It was just this one very brief season where a lot of money was going out and not as much was coming in. And I asked for help and I got judged because of it. And that's okay. I, d I don't know that anybody meant any ill intent. <laughs> Maybe they did. Maybe they did. I don't, I don't know. But all it did was reinforce for me the thought that I am not going to judge what I think is sitting in someone else's bank account because you just don't know. Lest you want that judgment coming back on you, which is what happened to me, then I suggest you just don't worry about what other people are doing with their money and just focus on making your own and creating your best life. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next episode.